What's up karate nerds? Just arrived at the airport on my way to my next seminar, this time in Luxembourg. It is a fine, beautiful day here in sunny Sweden, so I'm hoping for some more sun in Luxembourg. Here we go. This morning I did my strength training for karate program, which is a resistance-based training program specifically designed for karate. There are three levels for this program and they increase in difficulty so no matter if you're a beginner or advanced you can improve your physical capacity for performing karate at an increasingly higher level and as we all know inactivity or sitting is considered the new smoking so if you travel like i'm doing today it's good to get a light workout in and i usually like to do strength training or cardio because i'm gonna be teaching karate all weekend anyway I've actually been to Luxembourg once before at an international karate tournament and even though I placed fifth or something I was really satisfied because I understand that there are three important things you need to make a distinction of if you're practicing karate person performance and result these three are not equal because I know so many karate practitioners and athletes that get depressed when they lose but you need to make the distinction and understand these three pillars of not only karate but as well as life. Because if you don't get that promotion at work or if you don't get that score in school on, on a test or whatever, then that does not mean that you as a person are bad or that your performance was lousy. The result should stay independent of those. Although they are related, they are not the same. Please understand that. I'm in the car with Ian, say hello. hello. Ian is a longtime friend of mine and an elite athlete, of course, with the Luxembourg national team. Uh, we've actually competed against each other back in the days and he was also one of the first people who attended my annual Karate Nerd Experience seminar many years ago. So I'm grateful for that because he made it possible for me to make the Karate Nerd Experience every year since then. And his friend Brian is joining us later and he also attended the KNX one year. I think that was last year. Hey, I'm Brian. I do karate now for 21 years. That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah, and how old are you? 25. Wow, so you started when you were four. Exactly. That's almost like me. Incredible. <laughs> Ian and Brian recently returned from Japan. And I want to hear their impressions and what they th what they thought about Japan because it was their first time so tell us guys you go ahead first um, I think it was the best trip I've ever taken why because there were so many new impressions so many things that I didn't have ne had never seen and I couldn't have imagined before the trip right but it was a bit it was a lot to take in for yeah. only two weeks it's a lot but I definitely want to go again it is a lot yeah. The strange thing about Japanese culture is that it's so totally opposite to the Western culture. One example, when you count in Japanese, you do this, one, two, three, four, five. And in the West, we count like this, one, two, three, four, it's the opposite. So when you want to say one in Japanese, you go like this. But this to me means four. <laughs> strange, right? Okay, your turn. Brian? Number one experience or memorable moment? I would say the ladies. <laughs> tell, tell me why. What is so special? Beautiful ladies. Really? Yeah. Really? Well dressed. Yeah. Love them. And you're single, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Still. So that was a big plus. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's good. Good summary of Japan. Good morning, beautiful people. On my way to teach the seminar, first session is for kids and I can already see some kids walking over there on their way to the seminar. This is gonna be fun.
whenever you do a round kick, like a mawashigeri or a ura mawashigeri, this foot needs to twist so the toes are pointing over there. Okay, also Akis von der Mawashi oder Ura Mawashi macht. If you don't twist this foot like that, you are blocking your own kick and your own ability to kick hard and high. Thank you so much guys for coming. Thank you. I hope I can be back one day. Time for lunch break. Luxembourgish barbecue. Hi Jess. Hello. Hello. Mmm, <laughs> that's delicious. If you practice gymnastics, the first thing you learn is how to land safely. Because then you're not afraid of doing backflips because you know that you can land. Same thing here. If you know that you can get hit, suddenly it's not that scary anymore, right? One of the biggest problems when it comes to fighting is fear of fighting. It's scary to fight someone. Duh, it's pretty obvious, right? But why is it scary? I think because we're afraid of the unknown and fighting is super unpredictable. Which is why if you want to practice to get confident in our fighting, I believe it's a good thing to slow it down. Back, back with the foot and try to have a straight line with your knee, hip, and shoulder, this way. After the first, I keep my knee, my knee, my knee, my knee. After the first, I keep my knee up. Start. Could everyone just gather around here in the center? Because you need to fit in the camera. You see, today is my mom's birthday. So I was wondering if we could just say happy birthday to her because I'm here instead of being home, right? Uh, can you see us all? What's cool. name? We can sing a happy birthday. <laughs> okay, say happy birthday, Celia. Celia is her name. Okay, you ready? And I'm going to send this to her. Okay, one, two, three. Happy birthday, Celia! For every inch, you tilt your neck forward. You add 10 pounds of pressure to your spine. Imagine how many people you've seen that do this. Ah! Right? So many people have the computer neck. When they go from work, they keep walking like this. Because it's a habit. They go to the dojo, they do everything like this. And it's not a good habit. So, if you can think about that, when you're at that desktop, zip, zip, try to get your backbone straight. And of course, as a human being, you're a product of your environment. So the best way to change the body is to change the environment. For example, in my own office, I don't sit. I haven't been sitting for the past three years. I have a stand-up desk. That helps a little bit, but of course, you're still inactive when you're standing. So, it's good to move around as well. But if you can, switch to a stand-up desk sometimes. Sometimes you sit, sometimes you stand. There are desks that can go up and down. That will help a lot, especially with your hips, because when you're sitting, you get tight, really tight. Then you bring that to the dojo, you try to pull everything out when you kick and punch, and then something breaks. about the foot, it's about the foot's relationship to the knee. So you can have the foot out as long as you keep pushing that knee as well. Because you want this torque, like I said. But 
after around 20 degrees, that's how your body works. It's mechanics. You start to lose this torque and you have to use muscles instead to keep stability. And stability in the hip works in this way. Imagine this is the hip bone. This is the hip joint. If I want to make this stronger, what do I do? I can tighten it up, sure. That's using muscular strength. I, I'm contracting my hip. <clears throat> How can I make it even tighter? Tighter twist. I twist it. Boom! This is called torque in English. This tension right here is what I want between my foot and my knee. And when you start opening up the hip, which is connected to the foot and your knee, you start to lose that. Because that's just how the body works. Same almost with the shoulder. The shoulder is remarkably similar to the hip. When you look at this structure and this structure. So that's why your sensei always tells you keep your elbow in. Sa same idea when you're, when you're punching. Because now I have mobility. Now I have stability. Because of the shoulder. Because it's connected to the elbow. I hope that helps. Ohayou gozaimasu! That's good morning in Japanese. I am at Luxembourg Airport about to head home. This seminar was a big success judging from the smiles on everyone's faces and the responsiveness to my teachings, so I'm super happy and satisfied. I actually received, received, received one of the nicest gifts ever from this girl named Barbara who traveled all the way by herself from Hungary to practice at the seminar and give me this. That's a drawing that she did by hand, which to me is just amazing. So thank you very much, Barbara. I also had the big pleasure of having the mayor stop by the seminar to give her regards. And that was also a big honor, just like at my last seminar in Portugal. These mayors really love karate, don't they? And also the vice world champion in Kumite stopped by, and she's like a legend here, so that was also a big honor and a surprise. Now, finally, I would like to say thank you to my hosts and organizers, Ian and Brian, for allowing me to come here and share my passion with like-minded karate nerds. Now, I want you guys to leave a comment and let me know what you thought, because your feedback means a lot. Until the next video, sayonara.